Hey there, today I would like to talk about the Parker Latitude. Now, this is an interesting pen, but it had a sad story because this was a gift to my mother and she tried to write with it for a long time, but she, she could not write with this pen. So I took one look at it and said, Give it to us, precious. And then she gave it to me. And I could write with it. In fact, when I wrote with it for a long time, it turned me invisible. Oh no, wait. Well, whatever. In any case, it's it's a nice pen, and I would like to talk about this. Uh, one of the questions is, of course, why could my mother not write with this? Was it the will of Sauron? No, I don't think so. It's simply because um, pens have different characters. I'm not saying they have personalities, I'm just saying they have characters. The way they are built, the way they are constructed, uh, may sometimes, I think, interfere with the specific user. It may not be compatible with a given user. And then you may hold it just the wrong way, so that the, the, the nib does not really touch the paper in the right way, something like that. Now, generally speaking, that will just improve over time. You just have to get used to the pen, and the pen is to get used to you. And then your hand will adapt to the pen, or the pen will adapt a little to your hand, whatever. In any case, the two of you will be compatible. And apparently, sometimes that just not work out. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually happy that did not work out, because now I have a nice pen. So, what I'd like to do is I will cover the pen uh, from the cap all the way to the other side and I'll tell you what I like about it and I'll show you how it writes. So let's start with the cap. I think this is interesting. Uh, this pen, as far as I understand, is discontinued. I could not find it in the Parker catalog. It actually said it was removed from the catalog, so I suppose you cannot buy this new anymore or just you know buy the, the few pens that people still have in stock. In any case, it is a lightly brushed stainless steel and it has 23 carat gilded uh, highlights. Which you can see in the cap, you see this nice end thing there, which is cut at a slightly slanted angle, which I think is, is fairly nice. Most pens are either entirely straight or it's a bit rounded off. In this case, it's slanted, which I like. The clip has the typical Parker arrow design which I think is not bad and the clip to my liking is too springy this is I mean this is really tough to move now of course you want the pen to be secure in your the chest pocket or whatever in any case uh, you don't want to rip out the entire shirt pocket when you try to remove the pen and this clip is really tight so I'd be a little careful with that then you have this nice gilded ring uh, which says Parker, it has the Parker logo, and it says France PI. Now the question is, why does it say PI? Again, maybe this has to do with the eye of Sauron. Maybe Sauron is involved, because it could be private eye. Maybe the eye is watching. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what PI, pen industry, I'm, I'm really not sure. I have no idea. If you do know, comment. Uh, so that's that's kind of nice. So you have this lightly brushed steel thing going on there. I don't think my camera will pick it up extremely well, but I do think it's actually doing a decent job today. So there's no real texture to it, but it's not. It doesn't feel like a mirror. It does feel like like steel. And actually, that's something I I like. I think that's a nice. Uh, it feels nice to the touch. It's not silky smooth. There is some really really minor steel like texture thing going on, which which I like. The the, kit, the the cap is uh, just click on. Um, you see this nice little ring which uh, keeps the cap in place, I suppose. There is nothing on there. Then you have the grip section. Now, the grip section is smooth plastic, and there's a lot of people who don't like that. And I can actually imagine uh, them not liking that because it is smooth. Now, I cannot imagine that you, you write and then suddenly your finger slip and you, you wipe out all your ink. I, I mean, I suppose you have some motor skills. But in any case, it is smooth. It can be a little slippery. Personally, I, I've never had any problems with that. But um, yeah, I think it's it's very pleasant to hold. But your fingers can slide around a little, and that can be a problem. So uh, yeah, it, it could have been a bit more textured. It is slightly tapered, which is good. It could have had some more tapering that would have made it a little more pleasant to grip. But again, I personally have never had any problems with that. The nib, I take it, is gilded too, 23 karat. It's not a solid gold nib, 
Um, it says pocket, has the pocket logo, it has a breather hole. I think it's a fairly nice nib design, actually. I, I'm sure you can't really see that, but there's some nice lines going on there. And overall, what you probably can see is the shape, which is a bit like a, a leaf, like a leaf on a tree, which I think is a very nice touch. It doesn't have the standard, let me see, this is a Parker Frontier. I'll come back to that in a second. This, I think, is a much more standard design, and I think this uh, is, is pretty nice. It's a pretty nice overall shape. So, uh, then, all the way at the bottom, we have, again, this, this slightly brushed steel, and at the end, there's another gilded highlight with a sort of end cap. The pen screws open, the barrel comes off, and then you have the converter. It takes converters or standard Parker standard Parker cartridges. That's not a good thing to say. It takes Parker cartridges. Usually I just use the converter. This is the cheap Parker converter. There's also a slightly more expensive one, which has a twisting knob. This one just has a slightly push knob, as you push knob, as you can see here. Uh, I, I've never had any problems with it this, but I don't write with Parkers a lot, so I only have one converter, and that's the cheap version, should you be interested in this nonsense. Then, um, I'm trying to screw it out, because the, the I, I wanted to demonstrate this, that the converter, the fit, is extremely tight. It's a very tight fit, and I think that's a good thing, because the probability of you accidentally pulling out the converter and sending ink all over the place uh, is, is actually non-existent. It's really, you really have to pull this hard to get it out. Maybe a bit too much, but I prefer that over a converter that's really, really loosely in there. So, screw this back in place. Uh, this nib is fine, so keep that in mind when you uh, look at the writing I will do in a second. Um, my thoughts on this pen is that I think it's nice. I, I think the brushed steel with the gilded highlights is actually an, an interesting combination. It would have been interesting if this was like a mirror finish with a really high gloss, but in all, I think this is this works out pretty well. Uh, it's interesting to hold because it is steel. Let me just weigh it. Yeah, it comes in at about 20 to 30 grams. Uh, that's not particularly heavy, but it's not super light either. And I think that's that makes it nice to hold. You can post it if you like. Then you have a, as you can see, a, a fairly large pen. Um, generally, I think I, I, w I used to use this unposted, but by now I've started to post everything. And that's uh, it's, it's pleasant to hold. It's, it's well balanced. And that's interesting because when you use it posted, of course, there's it's a bit heavy at the end, but I think it's it still feels fairly well balanced. So that's an interesting thing. Um, what else is there to say? Apart from me noticing that I've just smeared the end with ink, there is, as always, ink on my fingers, uh, but I'll clean that off. That's a good thing about this being metal. You can just take a soft uh, cloth and, and uh, clean it very easily. Um, so that's that's it, I suppose. In all, I like the pen. Something I could say is that even though this is a fine nib, the line is not as fine as I expected it to be. And I take that as a good thing. As I said, I didn't choose the nib. The nib was uh, chosen by the person who gave this pen to my mother. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of fine nibs. I'm more on the medium and broad range. But still, this is not a, as as fine a nib as one might expect. So for me, that's a good thing. But if you really like extremely fine lines, then you may want to reconsider getting this specific nib. If, in fact, you could still buy a Latitude, which, as I've pointed out, I think is no longer possible. Um, so, nice pen. Interesting pen. Looks good. Let me just come back to the Frontier thing. Because I've also done a review of this pen. Check out my videos if you're interested. As you can see, the two... Uh, well, let's just say there is a resemblance. Um, is there a big difference? Well, I think, I think if I remember correctly, the latitudes latitude is a bit more expensive than the frontier. I don't think it's a huge difference, but there is a difference. Um, what's what's the, the 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 big differences? Well, this specific version is all stainless steel, but you also have this with gilded highlights, so that's not an entirely honest comparison to make. Um, in all, the design of the latitude seems to me to be a bit more refined. If you look at the caps, 
then you will see that the uh, latitude has some more detailing to it. So as I said, let's ignore the, the, the gilded stuff for a moment because you can also buy the Frontier gilded, uh, but it's just, you know, the Frontier has a simple end cap and this is a bit more refined with some stuff going on there. Uh, the clip on the latitude appears to be a, a bit nicer, a bit more elaborate. This is much more sober. Uh, it's got the uh, the same thing at the end of the pen going on. This is a bit more refined than that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest difference is made in the writing. The Frontier is a very dry pen, and this pen is on the wet side. Not extremely wet, but on definitely on the wet side. So that, I think, would be the biggest thing that sets them apart, you know, apart from the um, the clear design differences. So if you're in the market for a wetter pen, I would go for this. If you're in the market for a somewhat cheaper, the drier pen, then you could consider this. But actually, I think uh, they might well be discontinued. This one, I think, is discontinued. I think this specific version is discontinued, too. But okay, whatever, that's life. So one pen to rule them all. I'm not absolutely sure which one you would choose, but, um, you know, um, let me know. What I'm going to do next is show you how the pen writes, just the latitude. I'm not going to compare the writing to the Frontier. If you want to see a comparison between the two pens, check out my Frontier video, because I do some writing in there as well. Um, and uh, that's uh, pretty much it. So thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you soon. Okay, writing with the Parker Latitude. Um, Okay, writing with the Parker Latitude. So, this is a fine nib. I have always found this to be a very smooth nib. Plated, I take it. It's not solid gold. But it does tend to give you some line variation when applying more pressure. Uh, not extremely pronounced, but it is there. You will see some variation in line thickness, line width. Uh, so that's that's a, a good thing. I like that. Pen performs well. You can write uh, fairly quickly with it. Not trying to be legible there, just trying to be quick. As you can see, the uh, the pen really keeps up with the flow, so that's very good. You can lay down a very nice pretty even amount of ink very quickly with this pen and I think that's amazing I mean considering this is a fine nib it's it's not scratchy at all it really feels smooth and if I just hold the pen like this and I make it slide across the paper you see there's no pressure necessary to really get a, a, a ink flow going so that's very good, and I'm always impressed by that. So, um, I would say thank you, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.